Hello there everyone and welcome to a new video game that I'm doing. So you know, before I was doing all these crappy Sonic Flash games, all these stuff that you know, they were fun to poke fun of, but I need a break. I need to play something that is fun. So I decided, you know what, let's branch out a bit. Freedom Planet, for those of you who don't know, is a Sonic inspired indie game. Um, that originally started as a Sonic fan hack and then became its own complete thing. It's now available on PC and Wii U, and, uh, honestly, I've heard so many good things about it, but have not personally played it myself. Therefore, I've decided, hey, I'm gonna play it. But, I'm not gonna play story mode, because I actually watched a full story mode playthrough on another channel that was the, uh, Best Friends Play, and I really enjoyed that. But, I just wanna get into and play a Sonic game, so therefore, we're actually going to be starting a new file, and we're going to be playing Classic Mode. Adventure Mode mixes in story and gameplay, and if you want my opinion on it, I think it's fun. I don't think it's the best thing ever. I don't think it's terrible. It's a nice balance. We're going to be playing Classic because, you know what? I think it's- I think that's the way we're going to- I want to go through it. Simple as that. Um, if you want to look at Adventure Mode, do it yourself. I implore you. But, we actually have a uh, oh, I guess we only have two characters for now. I think there are two more characters, but I, you probably have to unlock them by playing through the game. We're gonna play as Lilac for now. She's the Sonic. Um, well, I don't know. I might play as the other ones later. But, uh, just a bit of a warning. I am playing with my keyboard as opposed to with, uh, uh, you know, a controller like I normally do. I did not bring a controller with me. It was a mistake, I know. But honestly, from what I've just been touching right now, I don't feel like I need it for at least right now. The nice thing is, you know, normally in that situation, what I'd be losing to is collision damage. But right now, as you can see, there is no collision damage from enemies. You actually have to be hit by the pr their projectiles or attacks, you know? Which I think is, for a Sonic-type game, possibly one of the best moves ever. You know, it's it's great. But, uh, no, this is, this is a Sonic-y game. Um, so one thing she can do, though, is she can dash through the air like that. And that sort of replaces the spin dash. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, this is, this is, it started as a Sonic game, and you can tell, like, it's, feels like one. That said, there are a lot more elements from other types of games that you can, you know, feel in here. Um, I think I can break through this, actually. Or not, just wait, 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 wait. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can feel a bit of elements of some other platformers. Um, I get a lot of Gunstar Heroes and other treasure titles. You might not know about those games, that's fine, they're a little more obscure. Um, but just in terms of how certain stuff looks and feels, overall, it's a it's a 16-bit title, which, you know, is Genesis and Super Nintendo and, I don't know, was the Game Boy Advance? I don't think so, I think that one was 32-bit. Um, but no, man, it's just like, it looks so good, and of course, at this time, has confirmed to be getting a sequel. Uh, this was a Kickstarter game, but the sequel is not, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, look, be on the lookout for that, but you know what? Let's just play it through. And, like, like I said, there's a full story mode, so if you're hankering for some classic furry melodrama, which it totally is, and it feels like a Saturday morning cartoon, which honestly is one of the best aesthetics a game can ever go for, like, I love that. It's, it's, you know, it's what I want from a game. Okay. I need to watch out for this guy, because he is attacking me, and I nearly died on what is possibly the first obstacle, real obstacle of the game, so that's not good. He's like a mini-boss, though. So. Uh, but yeah, no, the whole thing is she has the dash, which is, uh, kind of awesome. It's, it's an air dash. I enjoy it. So, I'm acting like I know the game totally, but of course, I only know this because I played the demo uh, on the Wii U a little bit. And uh, from what I remember watching the best friends play, so otherwise this is a pretty brand new experience. Playing a game versus watching a let's play is quite different, um, I'm sure some of you are well aware. You definitely don't go online and complains about games you only let's played, or watched let's play, right? Because that would be sure terrible. Let's go place this on the switch here. I love block puzzles. Well. That block puzzle is nice because it's actually fast. Games that have slow block puzzles are the worst, and I hate them. It's like, you're just slowing down the player. And in a game like this, you know, it's not worth it. Then again, Sonic 1 had, uh, had that. Also, I'm instinctively pressing down to curl up into a ball, and, uh, it ain't working. 
which sucks. Oh man, though this this is you know between this and um, uh, Spark the Electric Jester, the one being worked on by the um, the creator of the Before the Sequel series, which again, amazing fan game, you should check out. These ones feel like the Sonic games that I've always wanted, and I am so happy that the um, you know the indie community exists to give me that, because honestly, you know. I love indie games. I know a lot of people are very iffy about indie games for some reason. That was really quick. Um, they're iffy about indie games because they seem to think that they're all hipster garbage and stuff. And there, oh, don't get me wrong, there are some hipster garbage indie games that man, I'm not a fan of. But at the same time, there's so many really good non-hipster ones that are just fun. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to get those. Is what I want. Um, you know, it's like I've actually. I've become a real fan of indies. Also, one one thing about uh, I keep trying to spin dash and stuff. I have to remember this is not Sonic. Um, so, like, oh, perfect. That was surprisingly went well. Um, what was I trying to say? Indie games, right? Um, there's a feeling of camaraderie between them because you know they're indies. They're they don't have the like yeah. There's licensing involved and stuff, and people you know want to protect their own IP and stuff. But at the same time. They're so much more lenient with like crossovers and stuff than the actual big companies and I love that because honestly the whole thing of you know companies being like oh you know yeah we'll put Pokemon in um, Mario Maker but you can't use sounds because that, that'll devalue the IP and it's like oh my god are you serious? Like uh, don't do that. You know meanwhile with indies they're just like oh yeah no put, put a buff Shovel Knight in Bloodstained and that'll be cool. Just because, why not, you know? Or I Indivisible, all that stuff. Um, so far I think the only crossover that, um, is in, um, with, uh, Fr Planet Freedom. Also, or Freedom Planet! I was just gonna say, I will call this game Planet Freedom often, and I apologize for that. For some reason, in my mind, it's programmed to be that, so just ignore that if I say that. Um, I think the only one that I know of, at least, that crosses over with it is with, um... A Super Indie Kart, which is a Mario Kart, like Super Mario Kart clone. Um, the other character in the game, who we actually won't be seeing, I don't think, in classic mode, uh, Carol. We're playing as Lilac, who's also Carol. She's uh, She rides in her bike in it, which is actually cool, because everyone else just rides in like a generic Mario Kart. Carol actually uses her, uh, her like, bike, which actually, when you play as her in this game, you actually use her bike, and it's that's pretty cool. I was thinking of doing a Carol playthrough because, you know, change things up, but at the same time I thought, I sh if I'm going to be getting this as my virgin, you know, Freedom Planet experience, I'm going to stick with the, with the default gear. No reason to go crazy. Also, that thing was straight from Super Metroid. Okay, so let's see here. Can I bounce off this or something? No? That oh, that's a stopper! I see. The level design is not what I would call Sonic-y, but it's good, nonetheless. Also, I guess another good thing is I actually waited for um, for a later version, because apparently there was no bubbles in the entire game. Air bubbles. You would have to go through it like entirely yourself, um, you know, just, just going through. So I'm actually happy I waited a bit for a later version, because man, that would suck. I'm not a fan of water. You know, any game that requires an air meter, I get super anxious about. So I'm happy about that. You know, that was that was a good thing to wait on for sure. Uh, also, various bug fixes and stuff, and apparently some uh, script shortening. I heard. Or what they did was is they actually went and um. Okay, no, I can't just hold right here. Got it. I was like, can I just hold right through this entire section? Or no. Nope. Um, they shortened parts out in the script that they said were superfluous. So it's like. I think, like, it's, it's so weird to think that they took lines out of the script to make it more succinct, you know? Also, that's great. Also, getting hit, not so great. I love the beautiful Joe hit markers, though. That's good. That's good stuff. Okay, that was a mistake. Didn't mean to hit him there. Okay, the soundtrack, though, I, it, it's, it's really good. Mind you, it's not the same style of, like, um, what's it called? Um, Lake Freppard's works, like the before and after games, which are have this godly, real Sonic-y soundtrack. This one, to me, feels definitely more like a, um, well, like, just another, 
you know, game... Oh my god, I am dying. Another game of this era, like another 16-bit game. Oh my god, that was amazing. Boom. Stylish. I love it. Um, you know, it felt like, it feels like a 16-bit soundtrack, which is what they're going for, I'm sure. But not specifically Sonic, you know. So. And of course, you can see there's, there's collectibles and stuff. It's not an exact Sonic clone. And I'm, and I'm happy about that, you know? Like, it can totally go on its own. You know, now we're here, we're in Relic Maze Stage 2. I, I don't know how many stages there are, but I'm, if I recall, a good number. Also... Okay, this, I was just gonna say, like, Relic Maze, yep, this really reminds me of, uh, you know, Marble Labyrinth. What other ones am I thinking of? Oh, uh, Aquatic Ruin, for sure. Very Aquatic Ruin. Which is the most boring stage ever. I don't, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me that Aquatic Ruin is probably one of the most boring Sonic stages. I don't like it, you know? I think it's really, like, why is it a thing? I feel like if it was later in oh no nah, that wouldn't really help though i just think it's such a boring stage theme you know oh so these things that we're picking up the little things are are cards uh think of them like trophies in smash bros if i'm correct um i don't think the best friends actually looked at it that's all where all my knowledge of this game comes from is just watching the best friends play through so you're you're in for a wild ride of me acting like i know what i'm talking about which no different from any other Let's Play. Again, go check out Goodbye18000 on YouTube. You can go watch me play other games. Mostly anime stuff now. Because, man, that's kind of, you know, what people like watching. Plus, why would I, you know... Oh, hello, Drillerbot. Oh my god, Drillerbot attacks me multiple times. Um, it's like, I don't know. When choosing games to play, it's like, I guess, why play what everyone else is playing? And then, of course, I go ahead and play this. So that works. I love the multi-hit cyclone though. It's really good. It reminds me of why I love games, man. Actually, yeah, all in all, indie games, that's what they do. They remind me why I love video games. Because these are... Like, back in the day, this was... This would have been standard. I mean, it would have been a good standard, but a standard nonetheless. And all I can think of is like, man, this just makes me think... Gosh, I love video games, and then I look at, like, MOBAs, or I look at, um, uh, even first-person shooters. I look at them, and I'm like, I don't really love video games anymore. But then I play indie titles, and I'm like, no, I totally do. I love them. They're great. Also, wait, I think she has an idol pose. I gotta show them off. Right? Am I, am I right? I was pretty sure she does. Okay, she just looks right. Okay, never mind. Idle poses, poses in games are such an unneeded feature, but I absolutely adore them. I guess, for the record, you cannot shoot straight up. There is no straight up function in, uh, for shooting. It's, you can go, it can't go there. So this whole part where we're breaking open doors by hitting switches, it's, you know, obvious puzzle stuff. Um, oh great, we got that one Pokemon gym from the, the one town. You know the one. With the, the, the Ruby Sapphire, with the Winona, that's her name. Um, yeah, no, but it's like I play indie games, and I just feel like this is why I love games. You know, it's like it reminds me. That's not the switch I wanted. Where's the? Oh, it's this one. Okay, now I can't go here. Now I can go here. Hello. Okay, so this is a magnet shield. Got it. Oh, I like the clock. That's a nice touch. But I don't know what those symbols were. Okay, sure. Whatever. Is this, this is a maze. I guess, you know, that's what it is. It's a relic maze, so I shouldn't be... Okay, I got out, though. I guess this isn't a mirror shield, though, because I'm not mirror. Uh, absorption shield, because I'm not absorbing them anymore. Huh. Okay, that's that's cool. I'm sure there's an instruction manual that will tell me. Oh, but of course we okay, this this is a treasure boss. If any of you have played Gunstar Heroes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is right from it. Blockman was his name. I think he was also in Mischief Makers in some form. But just a bunch of blocks put together. That's all he is. And that's all you need, man. You know? Oh I no, I wanna get that item. 
Want to get that. So you can't double jump into boost up. It's, uh, it's not that nice. Oh my god, I keep missing. It feels like a balanced stability, which is what I want. You know, I want I don't want it to be too powerful. I want it to be a happy medium between useful and and you know, I wouldn't say useless, but limited. Also, you need no momentum needed. Walk right up him or not. Of course I'm wrong. Hooray. Okay, that worked. Sure, that was the jankiest thing ever, but I'll take it. So see, now the purple door is gone, so now we go down for the yellow door. Or the light door. That's right, that's what yellow is, and purple is shadow. Not that shadow, not the one everyone begged for and boom, and then when he was there, people were like, okay, whatever. I mean, cool, fine. That's it, you know? I guess I can talk about it here, I was going to say. Uh, this is what I was thinking today. I like Shadow the Hedgehog as a character. I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of Sonic fans, and I'm a, I'd say, a pretty, you know, I have my criticisms of Sonic, but I like Shadow. Maybe it's because I'm, like, I, I really am a adventure, an adventure 2 apologist. I think they're super fun and uh, will gladly play them. Um... But it's like, you know, I can get why people think he's lame. That said, you know, don't necessarily have to agree with them, you know, because I think he's fun. I think he's a fun character. I think he's, you know, yeah, he's the generic emo guy and whatever. But at the same time, that's kind of like, it's, it's fun also because he was kind of, oh, so I can't sure you can from the ground. Got it. He was kind of like, not really the the creator of that trope, but he kind of, you know, he was before it was kind of overused, I feel. And I missed it. Oh, no, I see. I got it. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Card number 14. So yeah, we, we got the Switch. This one wasn't a boss. It was just a, a Switch, which is understandable. You know, switching it up. Ha! <laughs> I can't believe I made that joke. Oh, did I lock myself out, or is this the right way now? Uh. Um. Oh, oh, it's now going the right direction, it looks like. Yay! I did it! Nice. But yeah, as you can see, like, this is a seven-minute stage so far. You know, it's not your... It's not Sonic length, per se. Oh, hello, Master Emerald. No! That's what I said. Let's go after it. The bosses in this game are a spectacle. You guys are in for a treat. Okay, so here's the thing. This truck here, I was, re you know, because I like TV Tropes. It's a good website. You should all go on it. Um, I was just reading online, and, like, for, for, for whatever reason, they're like, uh, this person's big bus brigade thing is about the size of West Edmonton Mall. And I'm like, why is this international website page calling it the size of my local mall <laughs> like it's it's so random because tv tropes is not canadian but it's like yeah let's just use some some town's mall as an example and i'm like okay sure that just str str uh, struck me as a bit weird uh, but here we're in kind of the the act two a uh, very Little Mystic Cave, a little bit of the beta. Oh, there I go. I have died. First death. Boom. You're gonna get to see many. Don't worry. Also, one nice feature that they talked about for um, Freedom Planet 2. You'll be able to spend extra lives to um, respawn right where you died. Which, I don't think any video game has done that before and is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. this. <laughs> Look at this crystal. Oh, it's a bit. Oh, it's a simple things, man. It's a simple things. This dude's gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna let him. No, that, that would have crushed me. Um, yeah, I've heard that this game gets a little tough by the end. I will definitely have to navigate to using a controller at that point. Um, for now, it's like I will gladly take my uh gladly take my keyboard which is actually honestly 
working a million times better than I expected. I hate keyboard controls for video games. I think the keyboard is the worst video game controller of all time, honestly. And that's gonna get me a lot of hate. I know that. But it's true. Because it's just it, too many buttons, man. How? Like, I guess if you're playing an MMO or if you're playing uh, d d d MOBA, or you're playing one of those strategy games or whatever, then I guess, you know, then it has some use. But honestly, man, I think it's super overrated. Give me a good controller over a keyboard any day. When I say good controller, I mean, you know, DualShock 4, PS, you know, even the PS3 controller, which I know a lot of people hate, but honestly, I now I'm not as much a fan of it because I just straight up, you know, I've, I've been playing the PS4 and the Wii U, and both of them have, like, with the Pro Controller, not, not the gamepad, and both of them have just bigger better controllers than the PS3. So now the PS3 feels like a little bit of a baby thing in my hands, but you know what? That doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that it's, uh, you know, it's just smaller. I have no idea how many how many hits this shield is supposed to give me, but I mean, I'll take it. Can it go in this hole? No. That hole, it was not meant for me. But this was. Nope. Wait. Boom. Um. Yeah. No, I'm actually, I'm actually digging it. Maybe it's because it is only a, I mean, living up to the, ge oh, that was fun. Living up to the, you know, the Genesis is everything. It's like, this is a three button game. You got jump, you got attack, and you got special. Also, I like how we have a, a single enemy pursuing us through the entire stage. That's, that's a trope in games that I feel isn't used enough, or it's used for the entire game, which is too much. Um, but, you know, a good balance of for one level, you're chased by an enemy the entire way. That's cool. That's fun. Highly recommended as a means of, sh you know, shaking up your game if you want. So, there's a green and red crystal. I'm guessing we have to activate slash destroy. Hello? Are you, are you? Nope. I didn't want that. Are you the red crystal? No, you are not. Oh, hello. <gasps> Them bones! Look at this spooper! Oh, I'm a bird! I'm a bird skeleton! I have two eyes on one side of my head because uh, God hates me! I was a mistake! Oh, I'm a bird! Press the switch and it'll do it, yep. Oh no, just wait. Gotta charge up the power of the J.O. Crystal. Just me and my bros hanging out, man. No biggie. Oh, someone's gonna get that reference and someone's gonna be laughing super hard. That someone probably isn't you. Oh, I know exactly what's gonna happen here. I mean, I yeah, I've watched the playthrough and remember this scene, but it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly, I knew it. Let's go. L advancing Wall of Doom. Okay, now this trope, on the other hand, is one I could live without in games because it is super stressful and makes my palms sweaty without mom's spaghetti. You know, it's not not good, man. Okay, so did I get both of them? I think I did. Cool. Oh, this this music, though, is really good. I like it. So it's, it's, you know, it's 90s as heck, which I love. Being a kid of the 90s, I actually didn't get to experience much of the 90s, and that's sad. Also, he's, I think, playable in the next DLC update, so we'll we'll get to see him after. But what do we got as a boss? Oh, hello! I'm a praying mantis. Every boss will have this voice. Come on. This guy's like a scyther. Oh, it's, I can only attack him when his eyes are red. Got it. Aw, oh, man, the Shoryuken is the best attack ever in any video game. Every game needs at least one uppercut. Also, I am getting hit way too much. Come on. Okay, oh my god, this is not going as well as I had expected. I think that that does double damage. I could be wrong. Oh, his head does damage too, which is dumb. Okay, these are not the items I'm looking for. I'm looking for health. Please tell me- th Thank you! So I'm playing on normal difficulty, which is normal. Hard 
is way too hard, I heard. And easy is way too easy. So, you know, take take what you will, man. Okay. That eye's broken. Actually, now you know what? Now that I look at the eyes, he looks like a common rider. But then again, I just realized that all common riders are just bugs. <laughs> okay, maybe not all, but many. Um, you know. Oh, thank you. Okay. God, this guy is a, is a slicer from Metropolis Zone on steroids. Kids, don't do steroids. You'll look like this poor fellow. I'm so close, though, I feel. Okay, come back here, sir. Come on. Okay, good. Where are you at now? What? what do you have no weak point! You're the ultimate killer! Probably just have to cut his limb one more time, which would be fine if I wasn't so close to death. Oh, now his head's just a weak point. Right, that makes sense. That's like a video game, man. Okay, that, that didn't do enough damage. I hate how he has to be attacking. Boom. I may have been pooping myself because of how close that came, and this is like the second boss. Oh, there he goes, though. Sayonara, bug senpai. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. That's, that's, you know, my... I did all the work, not you. I mean, I guess you did. Are we talking about in-universe or out-of-universe? It's very different. Oh, we got Milia! Or Mila, not Milia. <laughs> that's that's a character from Guilty Gear. Cool though, that's actually super awesome. Fortune Knight. Well, I think guys, we'll be playing next time when we go to Chunyan. Plus, I think it goes into a little bit of Casinoopolis, which I'm super excited for. So we'll see you all next time. Thank you all for watching Freedom Planet. Ciao.